So I came across this clip from the Pokemon speedrunning legend himself, Worcester, from his nearly 20 hour attempt to get every gold symbol in Pokemon Emerald's Battle Frontier. In this clip, Worcester basically gets hacked into oblivion, missing almost every attack after Crobat goes for double team, getting hit by Confuse Ray, getting hacked by Confusion, and eventually resulting in him forfeiting. What you're watching is the first boss fight of the Battle Palace, the worst facility in the entirety of Pokemon Emerald's Battle Frontier, and possibly the entirety of any Battle Frontier in any gen. Why? Well, I figured the best way to answer that question is by speedrunning it ourselves. I mean, can't be that hard, right? If you've never heard of it before, the Battle Palace is deceptively simple. You have to beat 42 trainers in a row, every Pokemon is level 50, and both you and your opponent have three Pokemon each. Both at the halfway point and at the end of the 42 trainer gauntlet, there's a boss battle with this guy, Battle Maven Spencer. Sounds simple, but here's the catch. Your Pokemon get to choose their own moves. Up. I hate Wobbuffet. Oh, I hate Wobbuffet. Please. Now, on the face of it, it sounds like the speedrun is just about praying for good RNG, and there's definitely a lot of that, don't get me wrong, but there is some strategy involved. First of all, let me introduce you to the team we're using. So unlike Worcester's 19 hour run, according to the category rules on speedrun.com, we're allowed to use any Pokemon we want, as long as they have legal movesets. It's kind of like competitive Pokemon in that way. It's not necessarily important how we get the Pokemon. The more interesting question is, which Pokemon we use, and how we use them. Well, the lead Pokemon and the one we're using for like 80% of the run is Latios. It's a pretty clear choice. Great speed, super strong special attack, and great coverage means that even if we don't get to choose his moves, there's a good chance that anything he picks will KO. And I gave him a sassy nature because that's the optimal nature to use and I'll explain why later. And I gave him Lumberry because status move spam is just rampant in this run. Because Latios is so strong and most of the trainers leading up to the boss battle with Spencer are super easy, Latios can KO almost every Mon in one or two hits, as long as he doesn't throw. Next is the heavy hitter Slacking, also with a sassy nature, holding Choice Band with the moves Hyper Beam, Earthquake, Shadow Ball, and Double Edge. Shadow Ball is a physical move in Gen 3, and we have Hyper Beam because there's some Pokemon that are so bulky, they can actually tank a Choice Banded Slacking's attacks. We'll get into those Pokemon later because they're actually pretty significant threats. And last is kind of our wild card pick, Raikou, and it probably has the weirdest set of the three. Hasty Nature, holding a Magnet with the moves Calm Mind, Thunderbolt, and Hidden Power Dark. Raikou's kind of a niche mon, and we don't need it too often, but we mostly like like it for its 115 base speed, and solid bulk to tank most hits. All Mind is also good to boost past any mons that are too bulky to KO with Latios or Slacking. The Hasty Nature also gives it optimal speed and makes it so that we actually have a mon that can take attacks and dish them back. Which again, I'll explain all of that later. All you need to know is that these are our three guys. Anyway, we start our first run to get a feel for how RNG heavy everything is. For context, the only other submitted run on speedrun.com clocks in at exactly 29 minutes and 32 seconds. So that's that's ultimately the time that we're trying to beat. Also, we're going to be going for the silver symbol in this video. Eventually, the plan is to get gold symbol in every battle facility, but we gotta start somewhere. Every trainer and their team is randomized, by the way. There's a list of possible sets for each Pokemon on Bulbapedia, but at this point, we're still just getting a feel for things. We KO the Anorith in one hit, KO the Venonat in one hit, and then this happens. Our Stab Psychic from a max special attack Latios isn't enough to KO, but Shroomish only goes for Spore, which we have a Lumberry for, so not too much time lost there. The rest of the trainers of the set are actually super easy, and none of them really give us any issues, so we get through set 1 without much trouble. We then start the second set of trainers, which means the difficulty will get slightly harder, and turn 1, it happens again. Latios gets cold feet. So at this point, you're probably wondering why Latios is throwing harder than Ludwig during a Ludlock, and I can explain. But to understand that, we have to dig into how the Battle Palace really works behind the scenes. So in the Battle Palace's code, every move is classified as either offensive, defensive, or support. Offensive moves are your attacks like Tackle or Earthquake. Defensive moves are the moves that affect the user like Harden, Sword Stance, or Recover. And support moves are moves that affect the opponent but don't do direct damage like Thunder Wave, 
hypnosis, or toxic. And the nature of your Pokemon is what determines what moves they go for. So a Pokemon with a brave nature is more likely to go for attacking moves, while one with a gentle nature is more likely to go for a defensive move. It's all kind of complicated, but all you need to know is that Sassy is the best nature for this because Sassy natured Pokemon will try to go for offensive moves almost 90% of the time. But why are we getting this incapable of using its power text? Well, because Latios only has offensive moves, no defensive or support moves. So in the 12% of the time Latios doesn't try to use an offensive move, it'll either play that text and you lose a turn, or it'll pick one of its moves randomly. So theoretically, we should only get the incapable of using its power text 6% of the time. Theoretically. Anyway, everything goes pretty nicely until the fourth opponent in the set. He leads with Chansey, which is one of the few Pokemon Latios can't take out, since it has Soft Oil to heal up any attacks we might do. So we gotta switch out to our dedicated Chansey Destroyer, Slacking. So Slacking has Hyper Beam specifically for this Chansey, because otherwise we lose a lot of HP taking Double Edge Recoil. But we miss. Fortunately, we're able to take it out, but things only get worse from here. Dunsparce comes in, and we have to waste a turn loafing around. We go for Hyper Beam and miss. Dude. Which means we have to loaf around another turn. And then this happens again, Dude. which puts us at below half health, which means I have to switch out. Why? Well, now is a good time to explain another mechanic. Now the catch here is that in the Battle Palace, when a Pokemon's HP goes down below half, its entire strategy changes. So using our slacking as an example, its sassy nature means that it'll go for an attack 88% of the time when its HP is above half, but only 12% of the time when its HP is below half, which is why I switched it out. This half health change is also why I put a hasty nature on Raikou by the way, so that I can have a Pokemon tank a hit below half and not immediately become useless. So fast forward to the boss battle. L let's talk about this boss battle. First of all, his Crobat is holding a Bright Powder, which right off the bat is super degenerate. Bright Powder is just a straight up minus 10% accuracy to any move from the opposing Pokemon. Second of all, it has the moves Confuse Ray, Fly, Toxic, and Double Team. This mon really feels engineered by Game Freak to slow you down as much as possible, and as you saw in the beginning, it can kill entire runs. So here's the basic strategy for this fight. We lead with Latios, and this turn is probably the most important in the entire speedrun. So because we're running a minus speed nature on Latios, Crobat will end up going first. We need Crobat to go for either Toxic or Confuse Ray, because Fly wastes turns, and thus time, and Double Team will just f*** us up for the rest of the battle. And because Crobat has an adamant nature, using Toxic or Confuse Ray are actually the least likely outcomes. On the other side of the battlefield, Latios needs to not get the incapable of using its power text, and go for Psychic specifically, since that's the only move that can take out Crobat in one hit. We also need Psychic to not miss because that's a thing that we have to deal with now thanks Bright Powder. On our first run here, we actually get the optimal Crobat fight, and because we didn't take fly damage from Crobat, we can stay in on the incoming slacking, get some chip damage, tank a Shadow Ball, and even though we're knocked into less than half health, with a little luck, we can KO with the extra turn we get because of Slacking's Truant. Lapras comes in and it's tanky as so my idea was to stay in and get some chip damage, but Lapras' Quick Claw procs and KOs us. We send in Raikou, and its T-Bolt should too hit KO, and fortunately our Raikou is well trained, so no incapable text here. We finish our first run at a 30-46, which isn't bad at all. I'll take it, that's fine. So at this point, I'm thinking, are there any optimizations we can make to our sets here to reduce the amount of RNG? And after doing some calcs, I realized that we turn a lot of two-hit KOs into Okos if Latios was just a little stronger. That's when I think, why don't I just give it Soldu instead of Lumberry? And if you don't know, Soldu basically beefs up Latios and Latios. It boosts their special attack and special defense by 50%. Unfortunately, I didn't realize the game secretly disables the effects of Soldu in the Battle Frontier without telling you. So I effectively just wasted an item slot. So we run again, and I don't want to bore you with all the details, but here's just a couple dumb moments from this attempt. Oh god, okay, this is one of the more annoying Pokemon we could run into. Can we get a crit, please? Oh, Jesus Christ, okay, okay, okay. This is why you run Lumberry. Oh god, please. Just pu push through it, push through it. Oh, okay, that's fine. Is that a roll? I need to do some. So we're able to push through the bullshit and we're clocking in at 26 and a half minutes going into the Spencer fight. Remember, the world record is 29.32. So if all goes well, that's an easy top spot in the bag. 
the all-important turn one begins. Crobat versus Latios. We luck out big time with Crobat going for Toxic. Remember that I put a fucking useless Soul Dew on Latios, so if we get confused, we would have been unable to heal the status without Lumberry. We even get the Psychic KO, so we start off real strong. Slacking comes in, and rather than stay in to do chip damage, I decided I wanted to make a big boy play and predict the Shadow Ball and switch in our own Slacking for free. That's not exactly what happens but we can still come back. Since Spencer's slacking has to loaf around, we have a free turn to do damage, as long as we don't hit ourselves. At this point, I'm like fumbling around debating whether or not to switch out, but ultimately, I decided to just stay in, burn the truant turn, and pray that we can tank. Fortunately, we do, but now we're at below half, which means, again, we have that 12% chance to attack on top of the 50% confusion. Just when I start to think we threw the run, our boy Slacking comes through and delivers a powerful hyper beam, which is actually the only move Slacking has that can KO opposing Slacking. We're forced to stay in as the Lapras comes in and fortunately it just takes us out with Ice Beam instead of using Protect and wasting turns. I send in Raikou to deliver the final blows, but it goes for Hidden Power, which basically does nothing. We narrowly dodge the Horn Drill, which definitely could have just killed our run. And finally, we take down Lapras with T-Bolt, and after some confusion about where the actual run ends, we're able to clinch the top spot with a final time of 28 minutes and 26 seconds, a little over a minute below the old world record. With my morale at an all-time high and feeling like I had the RNG gods on my side, I decided the gold symbol speedrun couldn't be any more difficult. I was, in fact, <laughs> incredibly wrong, but that's a topic best saved for another day.